Monte. Uh, Denise is Florida's MUFON, uh, uh, excuse me, Denise is a Florida MUFON field investigator, star team member, uh, former Florida MUFON state section director and chief investigator. She's very involved in researching the UFO subject. Um, she's, uh, I know she's a hypnotherapist, has uh, done a great deal of hypnotherapy work on experiencers or with experiencers, I should say, and has been, uh, and is the author with Kathleen of the book, uh, you're seeing the cover of it right there, The Alien Abduction Files, the most startling cases of human alien contact ever reported. Uh, she's got a lot of knowledge that she wants to share with you today. Her, uh, her title here is a uh, fun and educational workshop as Denise shares some of her new experiences with the paranormal and our ET visitors. I'm curious how fun works into it, but we'll find out. Really, let's give a welcome to Denise Stoner. How's everybody today? Doing good? Okay. Most of you know my story, at least I think so. So I'm going to do something a little different. Um, when I lived in Denver, I was involved very deeply with the paranormal. And that's just as complicated as UFOs. So I have decided to bring that back into my work. Because many people that call me and need help are now saying, well, I have a story and I don't know what to do with it. I need you to come out to my home. I think I'm an abductee, but I think something else is going on. And what do I do with it? So other than asking them to keep volumes of information for me, I'm asking them to begin to keep trail cams going in their bedrooms, going outside to keep track of marks on their bodies that become more than just something an ET might have done. So we're gonna run a little test here and I'll ask you some questions. We'll have fun with it. Maybe more fun for me than you. <laughs> Don't get nervous. Um, and we're gonna see what you see. I'm gonna show you some real photographs people that have sent me things and we're going to have to determine whether or not we have ET or whether we have paranormal and there's a fine line here as far as the difference Kathy and I haven't fully decided on some of them um, and I have an orb I took a picture of it myself and I heard it first I was on a road in Nevada. I was up behind Area 51. And we were seeing things in the sky, but this one happened to be on the road following us. So you'll see that as we go along. So first, paranormal or ET or both. The investigation of UFOs and ETs has become extremely complicated. Many witnesses are now coming forward describing events that run the gamut from UFO flybys, I saw something zip by my window or up in the sky, it wasn't flying like a helicopter or a plane. Landings, ETs, their visitations and abductions, and now we are finding that paranormal events have also joined the mix. One phone call I received began with, I witnessed a craft outside my bedroom window. But then I saw an orb come right through the glass portion of that window. It came into my bedroom. It floated around and it settled at the foot of my bed. I was writing that down when this person informs me that the orb popped and turned into an entity. So I now had to decide what this entity was. It wasn't quite a gray, it was blue in color. Was it a spirit visitor? I didn't know. It floated above the bed 
and then it went through the top of my ceiling. Another time it came and floated out through the wall. What followed was a typical experiencer report. I wasn't there. There were no photos in this case. We had to begin to search and investigate and had to decide what to do with this. Next, the same individual begins to experience objects in the home, flying off the shelves. Doors were opening and closing. The shower turned on, faucets turned on, all on their own. And before they could go to see what was going on, they could hear the water running. The shower floor was wet, the walls were wet. They would turn back off again. Disembodied voices speaking to them. They couldn't be seen. There was no body to go with the voice. These folks are already having trouble wearing their watches. Their hair dryers blew out, their microwaves quit. Their ovens quit. Other electrical appliances were flashing off and on. Was this because they were abductees? Or was something else going on? They also have marks on their bodies, some of them resembling three large finger marks, triangles on their hands as if they'd been branded. They had marks on the back of their necks. They had marks on their legs that resembled miniature cattle brands. At times they would wake to discover they had been scratched. At times when they were awake, they would feel the scratches happen. They had marks, scratches on their backs, their legs, their arms, their faces, and their stomach. They might even have burn marks or tiny patches where pieces of hair had been pulled out, whole tufts of hair just yanked out. They felt it happen, and that was painful. Most of us now have heard of portals or vortexes, where the possibility exists for UFOs, ETs, or various other types of characters can come to a landing here on Earth. If a portal is an opening to another place, or another universe, or another level of something, where an ET in their intelligently operated crafts can use this fast track to come to visit us from a faraway planet or place, then doesn't it make all the sense that other unseen forces could use this portal or vortex? Why not? Their unencumbered physical bodies could use this passageway to enter our Earth to pay a visit. Here lies the difficulty. Those of us in charge of investigating, studying, researching these phenomena are left to sort out this mess. So on top of it all, you've got a group of people witnessing. How do we question them? Because one out of eight of these witnesses will observe nothing. And we've caught this, all of us that have witnessed something flying in the sky. And one will say, there was nothing there. The other seven will say, oh yes, we saw it. So we ask you to sit down, draw us what you saw. Two of the eight will observe something so totally different from the others, you would think they were somewhere else altogether. Were they truly there? All eight would not usually come close to describing an object that had been within 120 feet of them all. I had that happen with a group, an engineer that was with us, and we were pointing at the object saying, don't you see it? It's right there above the telephone pole. That's about 120 feet in Florida. It was a huge round object. I saw it as copper colored. Three others saw it as gray with a mist in front of it. So, so there you have it. We couldn't come to a final conclusion on it. And he said, well, maybe I saw something. We asked him to draw it and he couldn't. So 
let's move forward. This is the book that Kathy Martin and I wrote together. Oops. Mode of transportation. Anybody seen one like this in the audience? No? Okay. Well, come on. Okay. You can't see this too well. But this is a photograph of something that was flying in the sky. Those are stars around it. The dots that you see, this has been called a jellyfish. They were first seen in England. I took it with a Gen 2 monocular. It was recorded. This is a still that I made from a video. If you look really close, at the bottom of it, you'll see three circles. Everybody see that? Okay. In the video, and I wasn't able to put that on, the video shows nothing but sparkling lights, a, a whole rows and rows of them spinning really rapidly. But when you make it still, it looks more like a jellyfish. There were tentacles that don't show up on the still. And that's why it was called a jellyfish. Moving all among the stars and the tentacles were all moving on the bottom and the lights were just shining really brightly. Why does it look like two different objects moving from video to a still? We don't know. I've seen several of them now. And they show up basically between 8 and 10.30 at night around Orion's belt. So is this where they live? Good question. If any of you have telescopes, monoculars that can show that far away that distant place, try looking for them. Mostly in the winter, by the way. That's when Orion's belt is closest and we get a good view. Memories of a possible abduction. This is someone that I'm working with. Take a good look. You're going to see burns. He's standing sideways, and that's his abdomen. There are burns at the top. You can see large finger marks with two joints. Everybody see that? Pick it up. Following the possible abduction, and while awake, he realized that he felt the burns. We don't know what caused that. It's not radiation in this case because he was tested. The rib cages are tender as if he was squeezed by the hands. This has happened to him more than once. And I said, we've got to have some proof. We've got to see what's going on. We don't know what it is. We couldn't test any further because he's in the UK. We could send someone out there and have them help us, but this is what we got. The problem is awake and aware, the same man. This is the bottom of his foot. He had shoes on, socks on, and he was eating dinner. And he felt himself being stabbed. Again, what have we got here? He's got something in his house and it's not an ET. As he was being stabbed or poked by something very sharp, and these are indented when you look at it up close, and there's an actual pattern to it. And it was very painful. He took the shoe and sock off and this is what he had. It's happened to his upper thigh, the back of his knee, his upper arm. And every time he's abducted and becomes to overcome what's happened, he has things flying off his shelves, he has lights flashing, he has orbs, and now this is going on. He doesn't understand what's, they're very fearful, both, both his wife and himself. So we're going to have to have someone with heavy paranormal experience go and look now we've got this going on in the united states 
I haven't been able to get any photos yet, but I'm going to. We're beginning to document and collect. How do we treat both? They're not related, but again, I'm going to mention the portal and the vortex. Once that's opened, how do we stop it if we want it stopped? And how do we prevent these entities from entering from the same area, the same opening? The signature of a paranormal visitor. And this is along the negative side. We don't know that the other is. We can't say that because he had those marks on his foot that that's negative or bad. Not really. This is the wife. While they were walking through the house in the morning and she was getting ready to get in the shower, she felt these scratches occur. Never consider scratches like this to be good. This is a negative force. And where they live in the UK, there had been some practices that we don't consider good. Someone had been sitting with an Ouija board, not them, but others that lived in their historic home. So no one ever wants to do that. Um, and now this has occurred again more than once, and they're both very frightened, and they're a young couple, so they can't move. They can't just pick up and go to another area. It's a very small historic home. So what I've asked them to do is to go down to the church where overseas it's easier to get information on a village. Write it down for me, bring it to me, send it to me, and let me read what it's all about. I also need to know about the land, and we need to know that when we get a report here also. We need to know what it's all about. We can't do all that work ourselves. Go and find out. Go to libraries, read old newspapers, go to churches, find out the history. If you're not in an old home, you better find out about the land. Was it owned by Native Americans, lived on by Native Americans? Who was there? What's it all about? And then let's trace it and begin to do something about it if you're fearful of it. And now I'm going to show you what a true orb is. Those of you, how many have seen orbs? Oh, okay. All right. Let me give you an idea of what a real orb is. A true orb. This was taken by myself. We were out, oh, we hadn't seen a car or a vehicle for over six hours. It's very close to Area 51 in Nevada. We had driven way out on dirt roads. The light that you see on the road is, is coming from our vehicle. And that's all, it did not come from that light. If you look underneath that orb, you will see dust orbs caused from our tires. Can you see those? They're very dim. That's just caused by dust. We were driving back. We had been out sitting in the pitch dark in the middle of nowhere. If the car had broken down, we had no cell service. We were watching things in the sky. I did not bring those pictures today, but they were uh, squares flying around, coming out of Area 51, and they all had odd windows. They were not airplanes, they were not helicopters, and they weren't flying even like, um, what would you call them? Test uh, planes. They were too small, they were very odd. Uh, we don't know what they were, but I'll show those when I lecture again. We wanted people to know about orbs here. I heard a sound, and the only way I can describe it would be that of pouring milk on a large bowl of Rice Krispies. So we had our windows rolled down. It was a beautiful night. It was winter time. I heard that sound, and I looked over my shoulder. My husband was driving, and I saw this about the size of a human head coming down the road behind us. It was flying very, very fast. It was equal with the driver's window in height. And it came down, approached the window. When it became equal to my husband's head, it stopped and tracked us. It stayed even with us. 
when we reached, well, I picked up the camera. It didn't try to move away or back off. It stayed right there, and I got this picture. The light you see was contained within that orb. It did not reflect down onto the road, onto the car, within the car. It stayed inside that orb. And you can see there's a little blue around the upper rim. That didn't come from the car either. That was all a part of this orb. So it stayed even with my husband's head. I was able to take the picture. I did not use a flash. I just started clicking pictures. That orb stayed with us for several minutes until we saw the lights of the city off to the right over the ledge. And then it zipped at a right angle off into the desert. And you could see the old hunched over Joshua trees and there were no, no big cactus, nothing. Those little Joshua trees were probably about four feet tall. This went over the top of them and off into the desert and it was gone. So we have seen these in people's homes. We've seen them at various colors and sizes. That is a true orb. Occasionally people report them with faces within. Watch for the faces. Sometimes they're reported with horns. You don't want those. <laughs> Uh, those are negative forces. Sometimes they're reported with the face of someone you recognize that has passed on. That's okay. That's fine. We have not had any trouble with that. In fact, we feel like they might be trying to let the individual know that they're okay. They're visiting to say, I'm all right. There is something here on the other side. And that individual is very comforted by that. Has anyone here ever seen anything like that? An orb with a face, hands up high? Let's see. I'm always curious to know how many. Okay, great. What I'm going to show you now has to do with ETs. We only know of two of these. Kathy has one, I have one. And I don't say that this is negative. This is just something that the ETs are doing. We don't know the reason. It's a Y incision. It's always on the crown of the head. And this individual, this man, is from Florida. And he awoke lying flat on his back. He was not a sleepwalker. On his garage floor. He felt the tenderness, put his hand up, and felt the incision. He felt the opening in his head. And then he felt a tenderness in his abdomen. And this doesn't occur very often with men, but he felt and there was moisture. And he found a clear fluid and some clotted blood. So he got up, staggered inside, and took a mirror and looked. And there was a needle mark where something had been poked on the very edge of his navel. And then he began to have memories of something coming in. And once it reached the inside of his home, he had been guided outside and he had no further memories. Nothing other than some kind of fear, of course he did. Um, so we are working on that. We don't really know what the full story is with this. Um, here, later on, he did remove his hair. That is the Y incision healed and no hair has grown there. We don't understand what the purpose of that is. And like I said, there's only been two reported. He never went for stitches. He didn't want to have to explain what that was all about to the doctor. And as you could see, it's a perfect Y shape. It's not easy to fall down and get a cut like that. And now, if you're ready, I have something here that I want you to listen to. And I'm going to ask you what you think you hear. 
because I speak to someone on a regular basis and I have for three years and they are visited by what we call the reptilians. I did not bring a picture of that today because this individual has only done drawings up to now. This reptilian attracts birds. I find that very fascinating because she has been able to take photos when she said she has a visit. She opens her bedroom window, the window is screened, and she has been able to video these birds flying. They're mostly robins. She does not feed them to the screen, and they actually clasp onto the screen and look in at her. It's really interesting to see the video. I'll do that in another lecture also. I'm going to let you listen to what she says is the voice of the reptilian. Listen real close because it goes very quickly. I can't decide. I have not made up my mind what I am listening to, but it increased the sound of the insects. And she's in the middle of the city, very close to Washington, D.C. She has black helicopters flying over her home all the time. She has seen disks, and as soon as the disk leaves, the helicopters come. And I've seen the photos of those. So. If, are you ready to go? And let's try this. Listen closely. You'll hear the insects, but you'll also hear the other sound. You hear the insects, and she said that this entity either hisses or hisses with a growl in the background. Do you want to hear it once more? Okay. Any ideas? Hands? I have not yet. I just received it. I only had time to get it to you for my lecture. Some, go ahead. Somebody else? Oh, that's a thought. That's a thought. Um, but she's from a very poor family and she's surrounded by other other families and other homes so it's a thought yes she thought it sounded like a buzz saw to her i've seen her i've seen this gal's backyard but okay go ahead okay she doesn't have well she just got a puppy and the puppy was terrified she filmed it cowering in the corner of the home next Her tablet. Yes. No, she did not make a video. It just happened that she was visited. She knew it. Her screen is always open in the summer, and she turned on record. Anyone else? Any ideas, thoughts? Yes? Huh? That's a thought also. All of this helps when we're... Um, trying to figure out what someone has done. Like I said, I've known this gal for three years, and she very rarely sends anything. She's trying to figure some of this out because she's an experiencer. Yes. No. Want to do a vote? Is that what you said? Okay. How many think that it is more musical than mechanical? More musical. Hands up. Okay, because we, we all have different ideas, different hearing. Okay, how about uh, mechanical? I have my own opinion. I'm going to tell you in a minute. Okay, and I saw some hands that didn't go up at all. So those hands that did not go up, who thinks it's something else? Ah, what? What? what you don't know. Some living thing. Can you play it once more? Oh, living thing, hands up.
go back one. Oh, yep. You want to know what I think? How about a bullfrog? How many think? Okay, how many? Uh, how many think that's a possibility? A big bullfrog. I mean, that's my. I'm the investigator, and I don't want to tell this gal that. And I've never said that I don't believe her as far as being abducted, because she shows every single other sign of being an abductee. But when you're frightened by something and you stay up most of the night, my gosh, everything is going to get you. Um, so I'm going to let her do what she does and we'll see what we come up with. Yes, one more before we close. Exactly. Um, she has had sounds in her home that have frightened her mom half to death. The dog gets scared. Um, so those we have not solved. But this, I think that we can. Um, yes, one more. Well, hands up again. Who thinks it's a frog? One more time for me. Turn around and look. There you go. <laughs> okay. And in closing, can you see the picture? Can you see the big disc off to the right? See the ET standing off to the back and the fence in the middle separated by uncertainty? I give this art credit to a friend of mine named Zachary. Is this one child reaching out to another? A home crafter mothership waiting in the distance while the human has her feet firmly planted on home soil, or does she? A fence is the line, neither being is yet to cross. But they are reaching out to each other for some connection. More is coming. Thank you so much. <laughs>